Hello, hello. What's up, what's up? Welcome to the channel. If you are new here, I am Astro Angel. And if you are returning, thank you for all of your support and love. For today's reading, it is all about how can you overcome those self-limiting beliefs? How can we pick you up out that funk and get you moving forward? Because we hate stagnant energy, right? So for pile one, we have look at the bigger picture full moon and Sagittarius for pile two we have be bold and make the first move cardinal moon and last but not least we have a time for healing those are your piles and I will see you there bye hello hello pile one welcome to your pile so to start out there is a heavy heavy wound surrounding love and expecting that no matter who you meet no matter if you give someone the time of day that is going to turn out the same as it was from your previous heartbreak there is a need to let go of the past because with the hangman in reverse that is showing me that you are the one that is keeping yourself in this lack mindset that everything is going to happen over and over and over again, no matter who you meet, no matter how it turns out. Because with predictability, you are already predicting your future. This is a victim kind of mindset. There's a need to pick yourself up off of the floor because you see how these two cards are on the floor and in the moon card she is sinking in water. There, there is a heavy sinking in your own depression, sinking in your own memories that have hurt you. Instead of looking forward, you are looking backwards. I feel like you do dream about what things could be in the future with another person surrounding romance because I do feel a heavy romance in this pile. So if you don't have a heavy heartbreak, this probably isn't your pile. Um, go ahead and check out a different pile or maybe a different reading. But you're sitting on the floor in your own depression just sulking in what once was. You feel no drive to meet new people, but you crave love. When we crave love, but we do nothing about it, we are just going to stay stagnant. We are going to stay in this reverse hangman energy instead of moving forward with the Six of Swords, because behind the Six of Swords, we have the Five of Cups. And the Five of Cups represents depression, represents staying in the past instead of moving forward. I feel like you have a heavy drive, not a heavy drive, but you have a heavy feeling that you want to move forward, but you stay comfortable. You don't want to take risks. You don't want to take another risk to get your heart broken. But we cannot move forward. We cannot heal if we are not taking risk. A part of life is taking risk. Is making yourself vulnerable enough to get your heart broken again. Because every time we get our heart broken, we heal and we become stronger. Stronger by Britney Spears was playing while I was pulling your cards. So there's a fear that you're not going to be able to pick yourself up again if you do go through another heartbreak. But I'm here to tell you that you will be. It's all about your mind. It's all, it's all about the strength of your spirit. Of seeing life as learning lessons. We're not learning if we're not failing. Because with risk there is a chance to fail but also with risk there is a chance to succeed there is a chance to find that love that 
you feel called to find. Because if you feel called to focus on love, if you feel called that there is a love out there for you that understands you and fulfills you on a soul level, then more than likely not, it's true. You don't just feel that for no reason. Because you know there's people out there who are totally fine with being single, who really don't care about love, and they have other callings. But if you, deep in your heart, feel that love is a part of your path, then it is. Only you know your truth. And from the cards, it's pointing out that you are a deep emotional person. And there is another counterpart for you out there. We have multiple soulmates in one lifetime. So just because one soulmate tore you apart or damaged you to the point to where you stay stuck in these memories, it's up to you to pick yourself up and move on. Because I'm sure that person themselves has moved on. So you were the only one stuck behind in pain because you are deciding to stay stagnant with this hangman in reverse. She wants to stay in that darkness. She's reaching for the water when it is in reverse, but she is upright too. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, it's like you want to sulk. You want to be in this depression. And that is your self-limiting belief. That you are not going to be able to find love again. When in reality, whatever you had before, was it love? Was it genuine love or was it a learning lesson? Have you even experienced love yet? I want you to really take that in. Was that actually love that you felt for that person? Genuine soul love or was it infatuation? Or was it trauma bonding? Was it a codependent type of love? Take the time to look back. But, <laughs> but you're already looking back too much. So I take that back. But do take the time to think about what real love would mean to you. Because love is different to everybody. So you, you need to get clear on what it is that you want out of a relationship to begin with. Because if you're spending all your time. You see how she's losing. Holy shit. I'll get to it. But um, you see how she's like. Focus. She's basically losing time. Because she's sulking. All of this magic is going into this pit. Of nothing. Because she is sitting there in her sadness and choosing to sit there in her sadness. While she has this cup full of magic that she's paying nothing, she has, she's paying no attention to. That is you in this very moment. But once you get out of this self-limiting belief that the love is in the past and not the future. Listen. We have the sun. And then we have the fucking empress. You deserve love. You deserve to be seen for your worth. Right now, you are in the five of swords. And I feel like you get a lot of anxiety. Feeling like you are going to get played in the dating scene. There's a lot of anxiety here. About what's going to happen. So you stay stuck in, this, in your head. And I feel like... People are interested in you. People want to give you love. But here you are stuck in the past. Just turning, turning those memories of, oh my god, it's going to happen again. I'm going to get stabbed in the back again. When really, you have the ability to see the truth. You have learned your lessons. You need to trust yourself. Because the things that you have been through have taught you what you don't want. Therefore, you are closer to knowing what you do want. And you need to give yourself more credit on your path ahead towards love. Give people a chance. 
You are smart enough. You are insightful enough. You are connected to your third eye enough to see through the bullshit. To not go through being um, played. You will know when someone doesn't see your worth. So you need to trust yourself so that you can be courted because people see you as the empress. Whether, whatever your sex is, people see you as the empress. You are nurturing. You are beautiful inside and out. You are connected to the moon. You are connected to your spirituality. This is how people see you. So you need to start seeing yourself like this. Because the self-limiting belief that you're going to go through the same things again, that you are not worthy of true love, is an illusion. And it's time to let it go, guys. Okay? So that was your pile, pile one. Um, let me know if it resonated in the comments. And I hope you have a wonderful day. And good luck on your love journey. Bye. Hello, pile two. Welcome to your reading. So your reading is going to be short and straight to the point. Pile two, <laughs> you need to realize that you bring so much to the fucking table. Listen, I feel like there is a self-limiting belief that you lack. There is a lack of self here. You don't see that you are in balance. You are emotionally intelligent you are so balanced in your masculine and your feminine energy there is such a harmonious balance with your yin and yang and you have done the work you have educated yourself to know who you are to know your strengths and your weaknesses but there's a lack of exerting yourself into the world there's a lack of putting all of this work that you've done on your on yourself into the world you're keeping it to yourself i feel like you're hiding yourself pile two you're hiding yourself from the world and i really don't know why because you are fucking awesome. <laughs> I mean, we have the Emperor and the Empress. And then we have the Queen of Cups and the King of fucking Cups. These are feminine and masculine energies that are completely balanced. And it's time to exercise what you have learned about yourself. It's time to put yourself out there. You could feel very passionate about helping people emotionally. You could feel very passionate about helping people like myself overcome their struggles. Because you yourself have put in so much work. And you know the strength of yourself. But there's still a self-doubt. There's still a imposter syndrome that is fucking heavy let's see what we got behind the emperor the star you have worked so much on yourself you have connected to your spirit guides you have connected you have found your own connection to your spirituality to the most high and what you believe in you have tapped into healing energy you could have came from a very dark life a very dark childhood of being bullied or emotional and mental abuse in the home but as an adult you have overcame this but I, I don't think you realize how far you have came so spirit really wants you to take a step back to look at the whole picture I feel like you're only looking at little bits and pieces and thinking that oh that's nothing I just did that it's not a big deal it is a huge deal. You are a huge deal, Pile 2. Let's see what we got behind here. The Eight of Cups. Holy shit. You have walked away from all that no longer serves you. And it's time to realize the strength that it took 
to pull yourself out and completely transform. And with the Page of Swords, I feel like you were so... You're so in your lane that you don't even realize that people look up to you. You see how the birds are around her, but she's in her book. You are so dedicated to staying in your lane and staying focused that you don't realize that people look up to you for your intelligence, especially for your emotional intelligence. With exercise here, um, you could be someone who is also physically active, who also takes care of their body, who stays healthy, who cares about your health. And if not, right now, you are on the way to that path. Yeah, you have taken yourself away from a victim kind of mindset. Pile 1 was the group who is currently in that victimhood mindset with the Eight of Swords. When they feel trapped, but they're really not. But you have already overcame that. You are the people... Pile 2, this is the pile who would teach Pile 1 how to find that inner strength. You are a teacher, Pile 2. You can be a teacher to others. But it's what's holding you back from following that path of teaching others is the fact that you have a heavy imposter syndrome of not seeing yourself in the right light. Of not seeing how far you came. Of not seeing how truly imbalanced that you are. I feel like sometimes you may feel this strong energy of what you are. That you are in balance. But then it kind of fades away with overthinking. With self-doubt. But I'm here to tell you. You had all of the right to feel proud. To see yourself in this high regard that others do let's see with the wheel yes pile two it's time for you to accept that you have came so far you are on top of your own world you have focused so much on yourself that you have completely transformed king of pentacles you are stable in yourself so give yourself that love. Give yourself that love that you have came so far and that you are stable in your emotions, in your mentality, and you have all of the right to have the ability to show others how to do the same for themselves. Okay, Pile 2, that was your reading. Let me know if it resonated for you, and I hope you have a wonderful day and good luck on your journeys. Bye. Hello, Pile 3. Welcome to your reading. So, let's start out by pointing out the energy that you may feel terrified of losing your stability, your material wealth. I feel like you work all the time, or you feel like you need to work all the time in order to support yourself and to support your family, and I feel like the fact that you know that people depend on you creates this kind of fear of, of um, letting others down. There is a heavy people-pleasing energy in this pile because you don't want to see other people sad or you don't want to disappoint others. Therefore, you sacrifice your time, your body, your mental well-being to prove yourself to be, let's say, the breadwinner of the family, the breadwinner of the household. There is no time for you to be in this full energy, this childlike energy to just relax and have fun. Because I feel like... It, feel like it gives you a sense of belonging to know that you are the supporter for the people around you you have heavy 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 discipline because we have the ten of wands which is 
basically taking on all of the work by yourself. Behind that, we have the devil. This is an addiction to pleasing others. This is an addiction to constant stability. I feel like your main focus is material stability. And you're being called to find balance. To find balance between the material stability and taking time out for yourself. You have to find balance between pleasing others and pleasing yourself. Because once we start giving everything to everyone else, we eventually get burnt out and we are not going to be able to have the energy to continue to provide for these people. Continue to be these people's rocks, to be their backbone. And I feel like this is a fear. So your self-limiting belief is that it's all on you when it's not. And that's hard to say, I know, because if you are a part of a family, especially if you are a single parent, this feels like you are drowning in responsibility. And what's going to help you is to open up, is to vocalize that you are burnout, to vocalize that you need help. It's okay to have help, Pile 3. Whether that is financially or emotionally or someone just helping you out, run errands, just little things can make a huge difference once we start asking for help. Because I feel like you have people around you that want to help you. Maybe they even offer help to you and you turn it away because there is an obsession of being in control. A heavy obsession with feeling like if you don't have control, the world is going to stop turning. Like everything's going to fall apart and it's not true. Let's see what we have. Page of Pentacles. The Hermit and the Knight of Wands. Also, being so focused on work, I feel like being serious all the time, you could build up a lot of anxiety that comes out as anger to the people around you. Like you're quick with the tongue. You're quick to cuss somebody out. But the only reason you feel all of this stress and this buildup of having zero patience, very thin patience with others around you is because you're not letting your you're not letting anyone help you. You feel that if you feel that it's all on you no matter what. But with the belonging card there are people around you that want to help you. But maybe you don't feel comfortable with asking for help. Maybe you see that as weak or you see that as you're lacking. But it's not true. No one sees you as weak. You do so much for the people around you. There's no way that they could look at you that way. And first of all, let's go ahead and knock this in the butt. Um, who cares? <laughs> who cares if someone sees you as weak? Because you know all of that you know all that you do and all that you put in for your family and for your loved ones. Who cares what someone else has to say? It's human to have feelings. It's human to get burnt out. It's human to need help. It's all about community. Life is hard when we are doing everything on our own. And it always, 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 always leads to burnout. So Spirit is calling you to open up to asking for help. To open up to depend on others. Not just people depending on you. 
you also have to have a shoulder to lean on sometimes. But Spirit does want to congratulate you for being that foundation, for being so disciplined to make sure that ends meet. I just burped, that's confirmation. But also, Spirit wants you to find balance with this Two of Pentacles, to find balance with your with your energies, with asking for help and offering help. Being the backbone and someone else being the backbone. There's got to be some kind of balance. With the full card, there's a deep fear of being judged for letting loose. It's okay to let loose. The wheel is going to keep turning in your favor. And a matter of fact, the wheel is going to turn more in your favor whenever you find balance within self, within the world around you. Okay, guys, that was your reading. Let me know if it resonated in the comments. And I hope you have a wonderful day and good luck on your journeys. Bye. Thank you.